Hello, my precious viewers. It's my pleasure once again to come your way. My name is Kingsley, and I'm the CEO of Aquatic Hero Swimming Club. In today's lesson, I'll be showing you some basic techniques to help improve your level of confidence and to overcome your fear of drowning in water. But before we proceed, I would like us to analyze this scenario. As you can see, this is a marble, a stone, and a very tiny one for that matter, and this is a basketball. Ideally, we all know the basketball weighs much heavier than the marble, right? Good. Now I'm going to drop each one after the other into the water. Let's see what happens after I drop each. All right, so I'm dropping the marble. As you can see, this is a tiny marble. I'm dropping it gently into the water. Great. As you can see, the marble has sink straight down the bottom of the water. Okay, now I'm dropping the basketball also. Let's see what happens to the basketball. Good. Now, what idea am I trying to create with this scenario? I realized the main issue that triggers people's fear when it comes to swimming is the fact that they've been considering the weight of their body that makes them feel they are too heavy enough to be able to float in water. However, as you all observe in the scenario, the basketball that weighs much heavier than the tiny marble was floating on the surface of the water whilst the marble sink to the bottom of the pool. This implies that floating in water does not only depend on the weight of a body, but the buoyancy of the body, which is influenced by the volume, that is the amount of air spaces occupied by the body. And the human body for this matter comprises of series of organs that are naturally hollow. For example, the stomach, the intestine, the pancreas, the lungs that serve as a vacuum for the gaseous exchange during breathing, and the hollow bones in women, among others. All this contributes to make the human body buoyant and to float in water. So in today's lesson, I'll be showing you some exercises to help improve your level of confidence and to get yourself convinced that irrespective of your body's weight, you can also float and swim. Now let's proceed. Our first exercise is to take a few walks up and down the shallow side of the pool. This is a very good exercise. It helps burn calories and strengthens the muscle groups. At the very beginning, you may feel more resistance against your movement. Do more of the workings up and down until you are able to move freely without much resistance. So now in the second exercise, we are going to seize our breath, no breathing, okay? But then we are starting that first by holding our nose. So let's try that. In there. So I'm holding the nose entirely. I go down. Good. So now, the question is why am I actually holding my nose? I'm holding my nose in order not to breathe in under the water because when I breathe in under the water I will feel a very sharp pain in my head when the water gets in there good so we are going to do the same thing this time but without holding the nose okay you are seizing the breath without holding your nose I know you can all do that so let's try that above the water first so three two one go so this way as you can see I'm not breathing good and as you are doing that it's advisable you relax your body you don't need to be like because once you make your body tense like that there's no way you will stay long under the water okay so you have to relax your body so the most important thing in swimming is about relaxing yourself okay so if you really want to stay long under the water you need to relax your body as you are seizing the breath so this way good so now we are going to practice that under the water and to those who are still scared of doing that, going underwater without holding their nose, let me give you this hint. You can collect air, enough air into your lungs, fill your lungs with enough air. After that, collect some amount of air in your cheek, okay? Let's practice that first before going down. Let's practice it outside first. So you are opening your mouth very small and fill your lungs, trap the air into your lungs directly. I was saying, So now, I'll bring some amount of air into my cheek, okay? So I'm taking it in first, let's go. Into my lungs. Good. 
Good. You can practice this right now and see how you feel. Once you have enough air in your lungs and still have some amount of air in your cheek, it won't be easy for you to breathe in. Breathing in will be very difficult for you. You can try that and see. You fill your lungs with enough air and get enough air in your cheek and so. Then try to breathe in, like inhale through your nose and see if it's easy for you to do. It will be very difficult. So that way, if you are like that, when you go down the water, there's no way you are going to breathe in by inhaling the water. Okay? So we are trying that under the water. We are first going to fill our lungs with enough air. Then in our cheek, then we gently go down. Very good. So now the next thing is this. Now we are not going to collect the, the air in the cheek, but we will seize the breath. I know now you can do that. So you are seizing your breath, not breathing in, not even out for now. So let's go gently, just relax your body. That's how you can stay longer under the water. Very good. Now, I advise you try repeat this severally until you are able to spend at least 30 seconds under the water. Okay, so keep practicing, relax your body, cease breathing and go down, feel comfortable until you are able to get at least 30 seconds under the water. That's 30 or more seconds under the water. Good. So, we are moving to the third exercise. The third exercise is this. I want you to understand that underwater you are free to breathe out. You can breathe out by exhaling the air through your nose. As in, that way you are exhaling the air, you are blowing the air out. So you see bubbles coming out. You are not breathing in, in, you are not inhaling, so the water cannot get in your head. Okay? Good. So for you to be able to blow enough air, you need to fill your lungs with enough air before you go down. So you'll be able to release enough air, and that will make you feel more comfortable. Good. And these are some common mistakes that people do. Instead of trapping the air into their lungs, they trap it into their cheek. When you are like that, it will be difficult for you to blow the bubbles freely. For example, you see someone doing this. In that way, the bubbles will be breaking. You can't have your bubbles flow through. Okay, it will flow freely. Okay, good. So you need to fill your lungs with the air. Take the air directly into your lungs not in your cheek don't collect the air in your cheek and this is how you do that you open the mouth very small remember when you open the mouth too widely you are going to use your throat in trapping the air and by so doing you will not be able to trap enough air as in i've not gotten enough air open the mouth very small then use your lungs gently to trap more air slowly until your lung is full then you go down with it okay so is this very small then you see my chest coming up. I hope you saw that. You see how I'm able to flow, to blow the bubbles continuously without breaks. Good. So try do this repeatedly okay try it repeatedly until you are able to blow freely okay it's a very good exercise you are actually training your lungs okay you are increasing the volume of your lungs okay this will also contribute to your buoyancy good so now our next exercise is this you are going to fill your lungs with enough air and then try to sit on the floor okay enough air in you try to sit on the floor okay remember we are doing this at the shallow end of the pool it's not deep so even if i'm able to sit i can stand up if i wish to okay good so remember you are filling the lungs with enough air they trap enough air into your lungs let's see by opening your mouth very small remember
why did you upset? If you can take a very clear look, you could see I was not able to sit on the floor. Good. The reason is that I had enough air in me, okay? And like I explained earlier, when, when I was giving the introduction, I explained that floating in water depends on the body's buoyancy and the buoyancy of the body is being influenced by the volume, the amount of air spaces in the body, okay? So as you fill your lungs with enough air, you increase your buoyancy, okay? The volume of the, the whole organs that you have in you, as in like your lungs, for example. You fill your lungs with enough air and that has increased your buoyancy. Do you get it? So I'm trying that again. Take a very clear look. You can see I'm not able to sit on the floor. So I'm trying that again by taking enough air first. You can see the water keeps pushing me up as I'm struggling to sit on the floor. Good. That's very good. So our next exercise is this. You are going to take in enough air first. And as you are trying to sit on the floor, you apply what you learned earlier on. Blow bubbles. Continue blowing the bubble. Continue blowing the bubbles and let's see what happens. So I'm filling my lungs with the air first. This time you can see i'm able to sit flat on the floor as i lose the air out of my lungs do you get it so that tells you that the amount of air in your lungs influences your buoyancy if you have more air in you your buoyancy will be high and you'll be able to float and as you lose more air out of your lungs you'll be able to sink to the bottom of the pool good so this time we are trying the same thing and this time as i sit on the floor i will turn around look around the four corners of the pool okay don't forget we are building our level of confidence we have to take away panic and fear okay so we are doing that just feel comfortable remember you are not breathing in just relax your breath okay let's try that filling your lungs first as i sit i'll blow the air to sit on the floor then i'll turn around very good so you can do this repeatedly okay it will help build your level of confidence in the water right good now our next exercise is this we are filling the lungs with enough air okay and this time we're going to try touching the floor with our hands with the air in you try to touch the floor with your hands okay let's try that so we are filling the, uh, the lungs with enough air you face down make sure you are looking down directly whilst trying to touch the floor with the hands okay remember if you don't have enough air in you you're going to sink to the bottom let's try enough air in you go If you really have enough air in you whilst trying this, you realize it will be very difficult for you to touch the floor with your hands. And that is all about the floating, floating in water. That's all about it, okay? Good. Now, the next thing is this. You are filling your lungs with enough air, okay? So instead of touching the floor, trying to touch the floor with your hands, you are going to stretch your hands on the water like this. And remember, you have to look directly down, okay? I gave a tutorial on how to float. Like the other three things you should do to be able to float on water. I've given a tutorials on that. In case today is your first time watching my tutorials, you can click on the list below the description to watch that tutorials how to float. Like the necessary things you need to do. Good. And then, um, if you are watching me on TikTok, you can also look through my contents to watch that tutorial. I title it "How to Float in Water." Good. 
so now we are going to fill the lens with enough air then keep your hands straight look on the floor make sure you are facing down direct you don't have to look forward and as you're like that try to stretch your leg backwards okay let's try that so i'm filling my lens with enough air i'm facing down with my hands straight on the surface of the water Good. So as you've observed, you can see my upper side, that's from the head, from the hands down to my waist, is floating. The upper side is actually floating on the water while my leg is down. Good. In this case, I want you to understand something. Um, see, getting a perfect float in water from head to toe naturally depends on body type and shape, okay? And it mostly has to do with the, the type of bone that your body has, okay? When it comes to the bones in human, some people naturally have a hollow bones, okay? So those people can get a perfect float from head to toe, and that is mostly common among the women. Good. But to some of us, we have a very thick bone, so the only, uh, I mean, the only space we have is around uh, this side, our upper part, okay, because of the lungs which I am filling with enough air and the stars, yes. So, because I have a thick bone in my leg, my leg will not be able to, I'm not be able to float around the lower side, that's my leg, okay, good. So, it is natural. In case you have applied the, the measure straight in that by looking down, keeping your hands straight, filling your lungs with enough air. If your leg is not floating, it's not a problem, okay, it's not a problem. The great news is this. Once you are able to keep the upper part floating, it's good. You are good to go, okay? Remember when you are swimming, you don't just keep your legs idle. Your legs perform a duty to keep it floating and move you forward, okay? I will actually give a tutorial on that. So, um, like I was saying, yes, we are practicing that. And to those that have that, uh, how do you call it, that light bone or that hollow bones, once you display yourself in this position, you have your legs float on the surface okay as you can see in this video you see how the lady is floating and the social amounts of few men um, yes and few male also you can also see this guy you see the way he is also floating Good. But in my case, with enough air in me, looking down with my hands straight on the water, so I'm facing down directly, you see how I'm floating? Good. That's it. Okay. Okay. So our next exercise is this. Remember when you release the air out of your lungs, you are going to sink down the bottom of the pool. Okay, you are going to sink straight down the bottom of the pool. And that is actually what you want. We are building our level of confidence. So we should be free enough to go under, get up anytime we wish. Okay, so we are doing that. Keeping your body very straight in the floating position. Then release the air to let your body sink to the bottom of the pool. Take your time, lie flat under the water. Remember you are fine. Okay, you are fine under the water once you cease your breath okay once you did not breathe in sorry once you did not breathe in you are fine okay so we are trying that underwater see in water you are free to do anything you are free to do anything at all under the water except breathing in okay we don't breathe in either with your nose like or with your mouth that's the only thing you cannot do underwater we don't breathe in aside that you are free to do anything you can turn yourself upside down as in this
you can do that once you did not inhale the water your nose trees there's a space there actually good but once you come out the water will come down that's it you don't have to inhale don't breathe it in that's the whole thing okay good and that that reminds me that even reminds me uh in case you mistakenly breathe in under the water you are feeling that sharp pain in your head this is the right way to to blow the pain away open your mouth very small remember it trap enough air into your lungs now go under the water to this level okay make sure your gaggle is still out your nose should go in with your gaggle still about right above the water then blow the bubbles and make sure you see the bubbles with your eyes you don't have to go too deep under the water you don't have to be too deep in the water like this no take in more air go to this level Oh, okay, all right. So this. Then you blow in that bubble, blow her that bubbles, and see the bubbles. Do this like five, six times in the pain we just go. Repeat the same thing. Let's go. Works like magic. Repeat it like five, six, seven times, and the pain will just vanish. Okay, good. Now, back to what I was saying earlier. We are getting enough air in. Display yourself on the water. The blow bubbles and lie flat on the uh, under the water. Let's go. You actually need to do this several, okay? Take your time, repeat this over and over. You are actually trying to build a level of confidence, remember. Good. So, the next exercise is this. Turn your back against the wall. Remember, with enough air in your lungs, you face down, keep your hands very straight on the surface of the water. You are going to gently lift your legs and then clip your feet against the wall then pull gently whilst you are still looking down with your hands straight okay so let's go with enough air in me i'm facing down with my hands straight i lift my legs against the wall and then i push Remember, if you are the type that can get the perfect foot from head to toe, when you do that, your leg will be on the water throughout your float, okay? But then, if you are the type like me, who cannot get your leg floating, when you do it for some seconds, after some few seconds, your leg will go down, okay? But you can gently push, okay? Push with your toe, push the bottom of the pool with your toe again to come back floating again, like. Okay, that, that, that's all about it, okay? Good. So just take your time, go over this, practice it one after the other, keep practicing, and trust me, this will blow all the fears away. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. And if today happens to be your first time on my channel, please hit on the subscription button and turn on the notification bell to get updated anytime I upload a new video. Like the videos, share them, and don't forget your comments are very important to me. Please leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about this tutorial. And you can also click on the links in the description to watch other tutorials from my previous posts in case you have not come across them yet.